Call of Duty just put out a blog post revealing everything that we need to know about Modern Warfare 3 from all of the weapons, the perks, the field upgrades, the kill streaks, everything. So this has me beyond hyped and I think it will get you just as hyped as me. So let's just get straight into it. Starting off, we have all of the weapons in the game. I'm just going to skim past them very, very quickly. Just 37 of them. We have the SV545. We have the mtz we saw in the beta the holger 556 saw in the beta there's the mcw like i said we have the dg58 which is something we did not see yet which is an assault rifle the fr 5.56 so this is one of the weapons that we thought we were gonna see in modern warfare 2 well actually the entire time it was a modern warfare 3 weapon so there's no more weapons coming to modern warfare 2 and you're going to see the same once we get to the bruin it's another mw3 weapon moving on we have the bass b uh the sidewinder which looks just like the mcw I'm, I'm a little confused here why it's literally identical to it maybe the iron sight's a little bit different i don't know uh, we got the mtz 762 which is a battle rifle i think that's why it looks like it's like an mcw battle rifle we have the striker i mean this thing was just an absolute powerhouse of an smg the WSP Swarm, which is the Uzi, pretty much. The AMR9 SMG. The WSP SMG, which is another Uzi. We have the Rival 9, the Striker 9, which, again, a lot of these weapons have the same names, but they're different in some ways. Striker 9. Wasn't the other? There was, we already had another Striker. Very odd. Uh, we have three shotguns. The Lockwood 680, the Haymaker, and the Riveter. We then have the LMGs. The Polum Yut 762, the DG 58 LSW, which looks crazy. It looks like a, a QBZ from Cold War. The Holger 26, so we have another Holger. The Bruin, which this is the other elite weapon I was talking about. This is what we thought was going to be in MW2, but nope, it's an MW3 weapon. So again, there's no more weapons dropping in MW2. We have the TAC Eradicator, which looks incredible. It looks like a like a TAC. And then we have the Marks Rifles, the KVD Enforcer, the MCW 6.8, the DM56, which looks like another version of the Holger, and then the MTZ Interceptor. And then we have Sniper Rifles, the Cat AMR, the Longbow, which was disgustingly OP, and then the KV Inhibitor. We have four pistols, the Core 45, the Renetti, the tie R, which looks like a hand cannon. That looks incredible. And then the WSP Stinger, which, once again, another Uzi-looking weapon. And we have one launcher. Only, wait, no, there's four launchers in total, including the uh, Model for two weapons. So we have the RGL-80. And then we have the uh, melee weapon. We have two, we have a, a karambit, and then just like a regular knife. So only one launcher. That's going to make camel grinding incredibly easy. Only one launcher. That is very, like, wow, I'm surprised. Next, we have six brand new aftermarket parts dropping at launch. So this is sick. If you guys didn't know, um, in the beta, there was like a Renetti aftermarket part where you, you do a challenge and then you unlock like a full-blown secondary SMG. It was unbelievable. So there's going to be six more of these. And you're able to unlock these via weekly challenges. So every week you have the opportunity to unlock a brand new aftermarket part for six weeks, which is well, like a month and a half. Incredible, genius. There's something to look forward to and grind each and every single week. Try it out, see how good it is and whatnot. Uh, once the challenges expire at the end of the season, the aftermarket parts moves into the armory challenges section for new and always available unlock challenge. So if you miss a specific week or whatever it may be, no worries you'll have the opportunity to unlock them uh you know down the road which is again genius so cool there's a reason to play it gives us a, an incentive and a reason to get on the game huge awesome one of these aftermarket parks is the jack raven kit for the mcw which one of the most popular weapons in the entire game that does not even look anything like the mcw anymore which is again super super dope we then have the jack heretic Carbine kit for the MTZ 762 battle rifle. Looks like an AR at this point to me. We have the the Broodmother for an SMG here. I, I mean, this looks like a full-blown Uzi at this point. 
the Jack Annihilator Bullup Kit for the LMG, which we already saw. I mean, that was incredibly OP. And then the XRK IPv2 uh, conversion barrel for one of the handguns, which reminds me of the MAC-10 or the X-13 SMG. So that's also really sick. And then this is the one that was in the beta I was referencing earlier, the Jack Ferocity Carbine Kit for the Renetti handgun. I mean, it literally turned it into an SMG. So these are all earnable at the very beginning of... Uh, 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 Model for 3's release. So now the reason they're not to do some weapon balancing on the Model for 2 weapons is because the health is actually increased in Model for 3. So they're gonna have to kind of balance the weapons and make sure they're in line with Model for 3 weapons. And right here it says that the weapon balancing will be done by Sledgehammer. W, we don't want Infinity War touching anything that has to do with Call of Duty anymore. So that's awesome. Uh, these are the different things that they're going to be changing on the weapons. We got damage ranges, damage values, damage location, multipliers to the head, torso, legs, attachment value, uh, magnitudes, attachment pros and cons value. So there's a lot that they're going to have to look into. So there's going to be quite a bit of weapon tuning, which is awesome. So uh, right here, it says that this weapon balancing pass will ensure weapons from Modern Warfare 2 are optimized to perform alongside the new Modern Warfare 3 weapons arsenal while maintaining the identity of the Modern Warfare 2 weapons as much as possible. The team will be observing weapon performance at launch and beyond as part of ongoing post-launch uh, game refinements. So basically saying that they're going to tune the weapons throughout the entire year uh, to make sure they're in line and is good as they possibly can be so right here are actually some super in-depth detail of each attachment's pros and cons one major problem with mw2 is how every muzzle just felt and looked the same so now you can actually see how much of the pro and how, how much of the con you are actually getting or in receiving which is absolutely huge moving on to the gear we have the six multiplayer vests we're going to be having we have infantry engineer gunner demolition cct comms and then overkill and then here's what each of one of those do so for the infantry vest we get an increase in taxman duration and reduced refresh time and you can't uh duplicate the effects by using the lightweight sneakers with this so you can only use one of them engineer uh it basically works like all of you guys remember engineer counter equipment and explosive expertise spot enemy equipment field upgrades and kill streaks through walls aimed on sites highlights them for the team which is new i believe and then faster field upgrade recharge we have the gunner vest here where it specializes in weapon and ammo focus kit uh deploy with max ammo improve reload speed and you cannot duplicate uh the reload speed with the mag holster gear which is another way of uh getting that effect demolition vest is like restock you resupply your lethal and tactical for 25 seconds and then this is the vest i'm personally going to be using uh the cct comms vest team intelligence resource increases duration enemies stay on radar and zooms out radar for you and nearby allies enemies you kill drop intel packs which generate a radar ping for you and nearby enemies when collected so it's like picking up a scavenger pack that gives you a ping so you can see where enemies are at amazing i mean it's like a it's like a uav at all given times awesome and then we have the overkill vest where you could use uh two weapons at once increase weapon swap which is awesome and uh next we have our six gloves here we got quick grip gloves the ordnance gloves uh commando gloves scavenger marksman assault and then here's what they do uh quick grip allows you to swap weapons quicker Ordnance, you could throw equipment further. Reset uh, fuse timer on throwback nades. Uh, commando gloves, reload while sprinting. It reminds me of Gung Ho. Scavenger, you get to resupply ammo and throwing knives from dead players. Huge on the throwing knives part. Marksman gloves, reduces sway and flinch while ads Assault gloves, while jumping, accuracy and time to ADS is improved. Huge. I mean, jump shotting is major uh, with these assault gloves here. Moving on to the boots, we got lightweight, climbing, running, tactical, stalker, and covert sneakers. And here's what they do. Lightweight increases movement and swim speed, reduces noise while swimming. The climbing boots increase uh, climbing and mantling speed, reduce fall damage. Kind of useless in my opinion here. Uh, uh, increases tack sprint duration and reduces refresh time for the running sneakers. It's like double time. The tactical pads increase slide distance and allows for aimed on sights while sprinting. Increases stack transition speed and crouch movement speed. Stalker boot increased strafe and ADS movement speed. They need to buff this from the beta. It was not all that good. And then the covert stinkers, which are going to be incredibly OP, eliminates footstep audio. 
which is incredible so you're, you won't be hurt at all moving on we have the brand new gear set we got tack mask mission control com link bone conduction headset uh mag holster the black light flashlight and then the lr detector and here's what they do tack masks uh, reduces strength of enemy flash stun gas grenade the mission control com link reduces kill streak cost by one kill reduces score streak cost by uh 125. The bone conduction headset reduces combat noise and allows improved um, identification of enemy footsteps and gunshots. Uh, mag holster improves reload speed. The black light flashlight shows recent enemy footsteps, which is basically tracker. And then the LR detector warns of hostile laser and radiation sources, which is essentially high alert. And then there's six more pieces of this gear. We got threat identification system, uh, data jacker, signal jammer, hijacked, IFF strobe, the ghost TV camo, and EOD padding. And here's what they do. Data jacker enemies you kill drop a smartphone. Collecting the smartphone generates a radar ping from that location. So it's essentially like the vest that we covered a little earlier. The signal jammer emits a signal disrupting place. Enemy claymores and mines warns of nearby enemy equipment. It's kind of like an EMP. Um, hijacked IFF strobe undetectable by AI targeting systems and thermal optics. It's like cold blooded. It does not highlight in enemy tactical cameras or recon drones. And then we have the ghost TV camo while moving block detection by UAVs, enemy radar sources, and heartbeat sensors. And then EOD reduces damage from non kill streak explosives and fire. So something we we've seen before. We have our tacticals: the stun, battle rage, smoke, scatter mine, decoy grenade, and flash grenade. And then we also have the snapshot grenade, shock stick, stim, tear gas, experimental gas grenade, and then the EMD grenade. And what does that EMD grenade do? I'm actually kind of curious. Applies a tracking device to enemies hit, revealing them on your teammates' minimap. All right. All of our lethals, frag grenade, claymore, throwing knife, thermite, thermo barrack grenade. What the hell? Uh, and then a proximity mine. We have a drill charge, semtech, C4, molotov cocktail, throwing star and then the breacher drone for the field upgrade there's a lot of these i'll try to get over these real quick the heartbeat sensor is not a field upgrade we have a med box inflatable decoy comm scrambler tactical insertion uh trophy system ammunition box ddos acs deployable cover recon drone tactical camera dead silence is coming back as a uh field upgrade if you don't want to use the perk you could always pop this as well uh, smoke airdrop, loadout drop, uh, suppression mine, anti armor rounds, portable radar. And then we have our kill streaks, which is a bunch of. So we have a UAV, mosquito drone, and the SAM turret. Guardian, the care package, the counter UAV right there. Cluster mine, precision airstrike, cruise missile, juggernaut recon, Wilson, Overwatch, Hilo. So those are coming back from MW2. The VTOL emergency airdrop and the carpet bomb, which was, I think was a stealth bomb before. Advanced UAV, chopper gunner, gunship, and juggernaut are the four highest kill streaks in the game. The highest kill streak being the 15 for the juggernaut there. Oh yeah, one major thing I forgot. Tuning is completely gone and deleted. You cannot tune your model for three weapons and that same thing will apply to Modern Warfare 2 weapons as well. So they're completely removing tuning, which is a huge W. And yeah, that pretty much wraps up literally everything. Boy, I'm out of breath. There's also gonna be a future blog post about weapon camos and challenges and whatnot. So I'll make sure to cover that when that drops. So make sure you guys are subscribed with those notifications on so you don't miss out on an upload. And I'll see you on the next upload, man. I hope you guys all stay safe. Have a great day and I'm out. Peace.